Zero Accounting Software 2023. Organized Fixed Asset Account Categories. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click on the tab to do so. Duplicate that is. Right click in the tab up top to once again duplicate. Back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down to open the balance sheet. But we are now opening up the custom balance sheet we made. If you don't have a custom balance sheet, you can just open the normal balance sheet. But the customization we put in place is that grouping we had down here for the liability accounts. Tapping to the right, we're going to open the income statement, accounting drop down, but the custom income statement, which is a comparative income statement comparing the current month we are working on February to the prior month we already did, January. Let's go back to the tab to the left and scroll on up. The date looks good to go. So now we're going to go to uh, thinking about our accounts for our depreciation. So I'm going to go to the first tab here. And let's go into our chart of accounts by going to the accounting drop down and then scrolling down to our chart of accounts. Within the chart of accounts, Zero has this nice system of breaking out each category so I can kind of see less accounts. I'm going to go into the asset category because we're going to be focusing in on our fixed asset type of accounts, which are categorized over here. Now, note. When you first set up your accounting system within Xero, I think Xero is, is better some, than some other accounting softwares at not overloading you with too many accounts in a generic chart of accounts. So when we first set up the system, unlike say QuickBooks Online, which gives you a whole bunch of say fixed asset type of accounts, which are designed to kind of accommodate every single kind of situation, Xero has less in terms of the chart of accounts when you first make up uh, a, an accounting system, which I think is good because that allows you to kind of uh, do more of your own customization and not have to delete uh, accounts. Now we want to focus on kind of formatting these fixed asset accounts. Now let's go to the balance sheet here to kind of think through this. If I go to my fixed assets down below, we only have one category of fixed assets at this point called furniture and equipment. And then we've got the depreciation, which is related to that fixed asset. So a quick recap on the fixed assets. When we buy the fixed assets, as we saw in the prior presentation, we do not put them on the books as an expense, even if we're on a cash-based system, but instead have to do an accrual thing. If you're in the United States, you have to do so for taxes, if nothing else, putting it on the books as an asset and then expensing it with depreciation, which we will do periodically. Now in the United States, oftentimes the tax code is gonna force us to do this for our income tax reporting. And therefore it's useful for us to track the, the depreciation schedules in another software, the tax software, which has to do at least the tax depreciation calculations and can then also do the book depreciations if we wanna depreciate separately for the book side of things. That means that what we want to have on our categories typically is a categorization that matches whatever our sub ledger is going to look like. So if we're using external software for the sub ledger, we would like to ask, and if it's our CPA firm or our tax firm, what are the sub ledger accounts that are in the software so that we can have the same grouping in our system. So in this case, we have furniture and fixture, machinery and equipment and then automobiles and vehicles and whatnot. But these are the two categories that line up to what we are doing at this point in time. So what we have on our system is, uh, is furniture and equipment kind of grouped together. Now we could do that. We can group them all into one kind of big category. And even though the tax software is going to kind of break it out into two categories, but I think oftentimes the easiest thing to do is to use the broad category ranges that are going to be the same as what is on the sub ledger. So what I'd like to do here then is I'm going to break out uh, our furniture and equipment to these two categories, furniture and fixture, and then machinery. And then I'll break out the items that are in each category to match out 
the 98,000, the 5,000, and then we have the accumulated depreciation that uh, we're gonna be calculating as well. So each of these categories, we could have a separate accumulated depreciation account per category, which is something I, what I think would be standard, or we could have a um, uh, one accumulated depreciation account for all of the fixed asset categories. So, I'm, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out two fixed asset accounts, allocate this out between the two accounts with a journal entry, and then make accumulated depreciation accounts. Now, if you've used like QuickBooks Online, they use sub accounts to do this. We're not gonna do sub accounts, but rather do something similar to what we did uh, here with the loan breakout, have that parent account to give us that more detail over here on the fixed assets. All right, so let's go back on over to uh, the first tab to, to see how this will be structured. And I'm gonna first adjust the name for this one. So I'm gonna go into this thing here. It's gonna be a fixed asset, uh, uh, 1520, but I'm just gonna call this one furniture and fixtures. So let's say furniture instead of and equipment, we'll say fixtures, furniture and fixtures. Okay, so I'll save that one. And then I'm gonna make another one called equipment. So the equipment, uh, so this is furniture and fixtures, and that's gonna be uh, 1520. So maybe uh, 1525, let's say, will be, uh, will be the, will be the equipment, 1525. So I'm gonna say, all right, add a new one, add an account up top, and we're gonna say, oh, what happened here? Uh, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I'm gonna go back <laughs> and I want to say, add not a bank account, add an account, uh, 1525. And it's gonna be the account kind is going to be a uh, asset account. It's gonna be an asset account, a fixed asset type of account. Okay, boom save it uh it needs to be i need a name equipment focus focus equipment all right so then if i scroll down now we've got the furniture and fixtures we've got the accumulated depreciation now that accumulated depreciation i'm going to try to make it a sub account of the furniture and fixtures account so I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to notice. I'm not doing a sub account in terms of what you might see in QuickBooks online, but when I do my groupings, I'm making a sub account right here. I want to indicate that it's not accumulated depreciation for everything, but accumulated depreciation related to the furniture and fixtures. So I'll go into that and I could say accumulated depreciation and I'll say for furniture, furniture, uh, and fixture, can't spell it. Sometimes I would abbreviate it ACCD pre sometimes, but it lets me type out the whole thing here and it fits. So I'll keep that for now. And so then this is 1521. So there we have that. And then I need another accumulated depre depreciation for the equipment, which I'll make uh, account 1520, 1526. So I'm gonna say add an account, 1526. It's gonna be a fixed asset and we're gonna call it accumulated depreciation equipment and save it. So now the numbers uh, line up. So we've got uh, furniture and equipment, the accumulated depreciation, equipment, the accumulated depreciation, and then vehicles, if we had vehicles and its uh, related accumulated depreciation.